virtual rally around the state of New Mexico that highlights how essential immigrant workers and their families are for our state's future. We support justice for inclusion of and legalization of essential workers and their families through the infrastructure plan build back better. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this rally. My name is Lorena Sanchez. I'm a community organizer with Somos Un Pueblo Unido in the Southeast in Roswell, New Mexico. We also have Somos Acción, the sister organization of Somos Un Pueblo Unido. We are a statewide organization in eight counties with three offices in Santa Fe, Santa Fe Homs, and Roswell. We are excited to share this space with our congressional delegation and with essential immigrant workers from all over the state who will be sharing their stories. We believe that the inclusion in the COVID recovery prog programs of all members in the community is vital to ensure we get through this crisis from this pandemic, especially of those who have kept the economy going. Gracias a todos por acompañarnos esta tarde. Now we will go with Viviana from Nuevo Mexico, Comunidad de Fe en Acción Café. Now we present it to you, Viviana Siniega from Café. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Viviana Arciniega from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Before starting, I would like to recognize the constant work that's been done to include our immigrant families and our families of mixed status in the COVID relief packages. packages. The fight continues to recognize our families in New Mexico. Having said that, I would like to present one of our champions, Senator Martin Heinrich, who will share with us a few words. He'll have to leave this session uh, sooner than previously thought, so we have to be conscious of that. But now he will share a few words. You may go ahead. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you in honoring and recognizing all of the critical contributions made by essential workers all across our state. From the home health aides and child care providers to the construction and cleaning crews, from agriculture workers and kitchen staff to grocery store clerks and commercial truck drivers. All of your hard work and sacrifice has been absolutely essential to keeping our families healthy and critical to keeping our communities afloat. In a moment, we're gonna hear testimonials from some of these heroic essential workers from many different communities across our great state. But before I say anything else, I just wanna offer my sincere thanks to everyone gathered here and also to everyone who's tuning in for your vital contributions to New Mexico's resilience and success in the face of immense challenges. We must do more to recognize and support our essential workers. And that includes acknowledging that many of our essential workers are dreamers, undocumented immigrants, or members of mixed status families. The COVID-19 pandemic made what was already true before abundantly clear. Immigrants are vital members of our communities in New Mexico and all across our nation. They make incredible sacrifices and significant contributions to all of our success. As the son of an immigrant myself, I know firsthand the promise that America represents for those seeking to build a better life. For our country's entire history, Immigrants like my dad and like so many of you have overcome incredible adversity and discrimination to play a vital role in this nation's success. We need to finally find a way forward to provide a fair and earned pathway to US citizenship for dreamers and the millions of undocumented people in our country. Many of these folks have done so much, so much essential work over this past year, and they have long contributed to so much of our local economies and have been deeply rooted in our communities. I strongly believe that we must do right by these fellow New Mexicans. You're essential and you should not be excluded. I'm also proud that President Biden and Democrats in Congress came together earlier this month to pass truly historic res rescue legislation 
that will help all of our families and communities in New Mexico. I see the American Rescue Plan as truly the beginning of the end of this pandemic. It includes billions of dollars to supercharge our nationwide vaccine campaign. There is $1 billion going directly to local public schools in New Mexico to provide for students' needs and safely return to in-person instruction. I fought hard to include more support for small businesses and a $24 billion restaurant revitalization fund to help keep our local restaurants that are so important in parts of our communities all across the state in business. Finally, we passed the greatest investment in our children and families in generations. That includes a major expansion of the child tax credit that will help cut the nation's child poverty rate by half. Soon millions of families will receive $3,600 per child under age six and $3,000 per child ages six to 17, all in periodic payments that will go a long way in helping recover the expenses of raising children during the pandemic. Some have called this expansion of the, of the child tax credit a children's version of social security because of what it will do to lift children and their families out of poverty. New Mexico Voices for Children estimates that 95% of children in New Mexico will benefit from this new financial support. And importantly, thousands of New Mexico children who were not included in previous pandemic relief because of their parents' immigration status will benefit from this expanded child tax credit. We also passed the most significant investment in child care since World War II. That includes a $24 billion emergency stabilization fund for child care providers and 15 billion of additional funding for the child care and development block grant. These funds will help child care providers operate safely, increase the pay and benefits for child care workers, and reduce the costs of child care for families. I hope that this is just the start of a broader recognition of how important affordable and high quality child care and pre-K is for all families. On that note, I want to say how thankful I am to everyone who for years have called on the New Mexico State Legislature to pass a constitutional amendment to direct a portion of our land grant permanent fund to early childhood education and our K through 12 public schools. There's no greater investment that we can make for equity and prosperity in our state than in, early, in the earliest years of our children's development. This constitutional amendment will be a life-changing investment for our kids. And I believe it'll change the trajectory of our state's future. We also just steered through another piece of historic legislation in the legislature to provide most New Mexico workers with paid leave. No New Mexican should have to choose between their paycheck and their health, particularly during a pandemic. I'm proud that our state now recognizes that all of our workers deserve paid leave and safe work environments. Thank you again to everyone who helped us secure these major victories for New Mexico's essential workers and their families. Now I'm looking forward to hearing testimonials from all of the New Mexicans gathered here to share their experiences and tell us what this means for them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Heinrich, for your support and for taking the time to listen to our communities. Latino and immigrants are helping keep rural communities alive and thriving in New Mexico. As a result, keep rural regions such as Lee, Chavez, and Otero counties, Latinos and immigrants are keeping school districts open, sustaining local workforces, and injecting economic economic buyers, diversity and youth into otherwise aging rural communities. That's why it is very important to hear directly from our workers. A continuación, Hilda Metran de Somos Lee County. Now we have uh, Hilda Beltran from Lee County. She will share her story with all of us. Go ahead, Hilda. 
Hi, good afternoon. My name is Hilda Beltran, and I am a member of Somos Lee County, a group, a group that's part of Somos Acción. I've been living in the United States for 17 years, 13 of those I've been in Hobbs. For many years, I've dedicated myself to cleaning homes, but I lost my job through uh, during the pandemic. My husband, who worked in a uh, seed uh, preparation plant, he lost his uh, he worked on a plant. We have three children who depend on our jobs. Our kids, just like us, would they would benefit from a change in, in immigration reform because we are always willing to move forward. The pandemic time has highlighted the issues that we're struggling with due to the need for social security numbers. We're not able to have access to the benefits that are necessary during these economic crises, including the decrease in the uh, in the oil industry that's affecting our livelihood. We don't want to be, we want our work to be recognized uh, our, because our work is essential, not during the pandemic, but our work is essential, uh, essential for the worker, for our state and our nation in general. We want our work to be recognized and our families to be recognized. We need that change in we need to change in immigration reform so that we can find more stable jobs for the future of our families. Hobbs is our home. We want the security of not feeling fear of discrimination. We, we urge you to use any tools that you can to give us this path to citizenship. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Muchas gracias, Hilda. Ahora es el turno de Gretel Barita de Comité de Trabajadores Unidos de Santa Fe. Adelante, Gretel. Hola, muy buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Gretel Barrita. Soy miembro del Centro de Trabajadores de Somos un Pueblo Unido. Hi, everyone. He vivido I am with en Somos Santa un Fe Pueblo Unido. Uh, por unido. Años. I've been living in Santa Fe for 13 un years. Trabajaba como encargada de, co um, de cocina I worked en dos as restaurantes. a manager, a kitchen manager in two restaurants. And always with the purpose of uh, pushing my family forward in the Estados future Unidos, and contributing to the economy in the United States. Forma con mis impuestos. I para no pay my taxes so that I don't nación. become Personas a charge for this nation. People like me, los we esta have pandemia. suffered the struggles uh, no during the pandemic. Tipo de ayuda we don't have any access to any type of economic federal, aid or any federal stimulus package. And we always live in a dark shadow En repetidas ocasiones me quedaba por varios meses sin trabajo y cada mes llegando a las cartas que tenía que pagar la hipoteca de mi casa, incluso empezaron a poner recargos por no pagar a tiempo. Charging me surcharges for not paying on time. Shopper, I had to become a shopper for no residents in New Mexico who would not leave their home because Yo they were uh, scared of contagion. I was that shopper who would go to the store, would choose things for them that they needed, and would take it to their uh, to their homes. I was forced to uh, to sí, risk myself and my family. And yes, of course. Pero no tenía uh, I was, I, I turned out positive for COVID-19, but I didn't have an option. I was and continue to be an essential nación. worker for this <clears throat> nation. Por eso quisiera pedirle por este for that reason, I would like to ask you through here for you to support us using para, your voice para encaminarnos a una to reforma guide us towards a, yo, an immigration reform. People like us, we y poder merit vivir an opportunity to be able to live without fear that one day they will Gracias. separate us from our families. Thank you. Um, a continuación, mi compañera Maribel Conde de Somos now, Maribel Española, Conde from Somos Española will share her testimony nosotros. with all Adelante, of us. Maribel. Go ahead, Maribel. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Maribel Conde. I live in Española. I've been living there for 16 years with my husband and our children. I'm part of Somos Acción, a, a partner organization with Somos Un Pueblo Unido. 
I work as a cook in a restaurant and my husband is an electrician. We have three children who were born in Mexico, but we brought them here because we knew that they would be able to give them a better life. Thank you to DACA. They're in the process of obtaining legal status. In 2018, my husband and my brother-in-law were arrested a few blocks from my house in front of my three children. The following day, my brother-in-law was deported and my husband is still in the process of deportation. We live with the daily fear that we will be separated any moment. This keeps affecting us emotionally. My husband and I continue uh, continued working during the pandemic because our work is considered essential for the community. We were going to work even though we, we were in fear of getting infected. We're still in fear because to this day we haven't received the vaccine. We're still at risk of getting sick and getting others sick as well. We are here to be able to move forward in the future and for our community to move forward. We deserve the same benefits that other essential workers. Um, that's why it's important for for you to support the uh, the, um, uh, the immigration reform and the inclusion and the COVID relief packages. Thank you. Thank you, Maribel, for your testimony. Now, Yanis from Familias Unidas for, uh, for justice. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Hola, mi nombre es Yanis Palacios. Gracias por escucharnos, Senador Henrich y Congresista Teresa Legar Fernández. Yo tengo 21 años viviendo en Nuevo México, en Farmington, con mi familia. Y yo, so, yo somos, yo y mi familia somos trabajadores esenciales. Contribuimos a la economía de este estado. Hacemos los impuestos, trabajamos duro y también soy estudiante. Los trabajadores inmigrantes esenciales motivan a Nuevo México fundaciones. El 9% de la población es inmigrante en este estado. Trabajan y en el petróleo, construcción, limpieza y restaurantes. Les pedimos su apoyo para promover la legalización de nuestra gente. Que todos lo que hacen es trabajar duro para sacar adelante este estado sin recibir beneficios como el cheque del estímulo ni desempleo. Las familias trabajadoras merecen ser reconocidas y apoyadas. Gracias. A continuación tenemos a nuestra compañera Hilda Gómez con el Centro de Igualdad y Derechos que va a compartir su historia con nosotros. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Hilda Gómez. Soy miembro del Centro de Igualdad y Derecho. Llevo 23 años en Albuquerque, Nuevo México. Soy trabajador esencial de limpieza y cuido a mi nieto después de la escuela. Estoy orgullosa de ser una miembro activa de la Comunidad de Nuevo México. E invertir en la economía con nuestro trabajo duro para que nuestro estado y nuestras familias prosperemos juntos. So that our state and our families can prosper together. In New Mexico, we have a, a very uh, proud legacy because we had we have now uh, been paid for our sick days. Our essential families are very important. We need a, a, a path to the citizenship and, and financial aid. 
we are essential workers, even though we keep being deported. And undocumented families uh, are don't qualify for unemployment or any 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 support programs. It, this pandemic has affected my family, especially since a year ago I lost my job. It's time that me my that the country and invest in their essential workers and in especially especially since our essential workers our immigrants pay their taxes they cannot consider us essentials if if they don't treat us like that it is time that the congress and the senate take action now thank you now we have norma mendoza with the center of equality and rights. Good afternoon. My name, name is Norma Mendoza. I'm a mother and a worker and a home worker, a central home worker. I, I'm an active member of the Centro de Igualdad and the president of Cooperativa Coimi. My family and I live in Albuquerque. We have our businesses and we pay taxes. We are very active family in the community. And we have a mixed status. During this pandemic, my family, the families like mine were excluded from any, any relief packets, any re leaving out the families that bring so much to the economy of this country. Uh, 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 in addition to the insecure, the financial insecurity, we still remain in limbo. Uh, without knowing if there's going to be a path to citizenship for our families. About 24 years ago, I left my my country with my family to escape from poverty and to give my family a better, a, a, a more quality life for my children. In 2010, my son was deported when he was going on his way to the university. The, the family separation was devastating, but in spite of that, although he's back with us, that event in, impacted emotionally our family. No mother should should uh, experience this type of separation. That's why by, under the structure plan Build Back Better, it should include uh, a path to citizenship and include us in the federal relief packets. It is time that the Congress and the Senate do the right thing and recognize that immigrant families are part, a fundamental part of this country and of the economy. We, we deserve uh, an, an, an immigration reform that says that all immigrants have a path to citizenship. So I'm asking you to please take action now. Thank you. Now, I give the space to, to my friend, Sandra Oshoa from New Mexico Cafe. Good afternoon. My name is Sandra. My family is formed by five. My husband and I are immigrants. I have a, a, a son, Dreamer, and two uh, citizen children. We have been living in New Mexico in the Doñana County 24 years. Why do am I interested in you? take our needs to Washington so that you fight for a immigration reform. I want to, I thanks to you, the dreamers. Thank you for having fought for the dreaming program. But our family is not totally secure. My husband is an essential worker. He has been working for 24 years for the milk ranches. Thank God he has a job. This is a very necessary industry. 
I am uh, a domestic worker and and I have worked thanks to God almost all this year. And it's also a very necessary in the industry. It's a job that is essential. My family and I are asking you to, to fight for uh, immigration reform just for all the essential workers, and especially like our family. Thank you very much. And Brenda will be the next one to speak. Good afternoon. Join us today, but most importantly, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your continued support towards my fellow Dreamer family. We are very grateful for your leadership. My name is Brenda Martinez, and I am a Dreamer. I would like to share with you about a very special essential worker that has not stopped working during this pandemic and ever. She's currently cleaning hospitals and clinics for a living, my mom. My mom is a definition of a hardworking woman who has had the courage to surpass every struggle she has, she has had to give my brothers and I the best she could. And sometimes the best meant to drink a glass of water for dinner because we didn't have food in our table or to light up a candle at night because she didn't have money to pay for the electricity bill. She might not, she might not have given um, us any luxuries, but she always put in our head and hearts that we could accomplish anything we set our minds to, always in a humble way and without hurting anyone. And that to me is the greatest treasure she could have um, given me. Because of that courage and encouragement, I graduated from college with honors and received the Outstanding Graduating Senior Award from the College of Business at NMSU. There are a lot of uncertain things in this world, but one thing we all know for sure is that one day we will all leave this world and all there will be left of us is memories of what we did, how we acted, who we helped, and how we impacted people's lives, either in a positive or negative way. I believe that God chooses certain people to make a uh, difference in others' lives and give them the power to change people's lives in ways they might not know or never imagined. Today, I tell you, Senator Hendrick, um, that you have changed my life, even though you might not know me, um, but I know God put you in a position with the power to change, to change my life, and for that, I thank you. And just how you changed my life and gave me the opportunity to follow my dreams, with all due respect, I challenge you today to be a champion for the Build Back Better Fund to protect all essential workers in this country, like my mom, who are undocumented and living in the shadows of uncertainty. You have the opportunity to change their lives just like you did mine and thousands of other dreamers like myself. You have that power. Thank you. Muchas gracias a todos por compartir sus increíbles historias y testimonios. Um, Thank you everyone for sharing your stories and testimonies, the, your the stories of everyone here. We know that New Mexico has a very strong uh, tradition to recognize the contributions of immigrant workers, families and youth, and to integrate us in, in the work of public policies. Thank you very much and thank you for your continuous work. The next one we have a, a statement from uh, Ledger Fernandez. Thank you for everything and the stories and everything that's art in the life uh, in listening. There are three. What does thank you mean? We always say thank you very much to all the workers, to all the essential workers. The other thing is respect. 
if we're going to have respect, uh, if we're going to respect essential workers, we have to do more than to say thank you. The third word is action. You have asked for action for from the Congress. And that's what we have to do. This is what we have to do with you. Commitment we have with you. And I'm very, I'm very proud that two weeks ago, we in the, in, in, in the house, we passed the, the bill for dreamers. And that was really that we did in the Congress with all the Democrats in the House and a few of the Republicans. And we also passed the, the bill for the, the law for the farmers, the agriculture, the workers in agriculture. We think it has a lot of possibilities to pass in the Senate. We have to emphasize in the Senate for the senators Lujan and Hydrin who are in this struggle, they are with us in this struggle with his people. They have to convince the, the other senators to pay uh, that bill. So what we're doing in the Congress, yo soy parte del CACOS de, but estamos, we are looking, we are working so the Build Back credit, it helps uh, immigrants. We want to work so that uh, they include the el impuesto de crédito para los niños. Si los hijos son ciudadanos, que por lo menos los niños reciban algo. Estamos a continuar de luchar por eso. To, to fight for that. We're going to fight that workers, if they're essential, they should get uh, financial help. And we're going to work for American. Back now, I leave to uh, DC. I will be there on Tuesday. And beginning on Tuesday, we will begin the hearings and we'll begin working on getting the American Citizenship Act. Because right now with the dreamers, and with the farm workers, we've got about 4 million people who will be able to get their visas. But we don't want to leave it for 4 million. We want it to include everybody. So we want it to include all 11 million. And uh, we made a really tough decision as to whether or not we would have those two bills, the Dreamers and the farm workers, because we know we have some Republican support for that. But we decided we needed to let them go forward just in case if they were the only ones that could make it, we at least got that. But I promise you that we are working really hard. We are doing what they call ripping, <laughs> which means talking to all of your colleagues about why it's important to pass the American Citizenship Act. Because the American Citizenship Act does what you have all talked about. It removes the fear it allows the immigrant communities to be full participants. You are participants, you are our community. You are our community, but when you have to be afraid and when you cannot participate fully in our community, you're not able to start your businesses, you're not able to be as active as you want and it just limits us, right? It limits our growth, it limits the entire nation's growth. Let me give you a number. $1.4 trillion, $1.4 trillion is what the United States will benefit from if we pass the American Citizenship Act and allow all the families that you've talked about to become residents. Imagine, that's what, that's what the last bill cost us. Immigrants can help save our economy. The same way they save you know, lives every day, the same way they save us by feeding us, the same way they save us, I agree with you that you know, cleaning other people's homes is an essential service because that allows them to do whatever they need to do. We are all essential. The work that you do, the work that you do, Yan, is streaming and working and being, you know, getting straight A's because you work so hard. Thank you for doing that. 
you know, in Maribel, you know, the stories of, you know, having to suffer through that, you know, your cuñado is deported and, and your esposo está en el proceso. That hurts me because I know what pain it must cause you. Um, and I promise you that I will work towards those goals. We have sent the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, uh, and I, I'm, I'm part of the liderazgo ahí. We've sent a letter to President Biden saying you must include these things that you have talked about in the Build Back Better plan. And we will work hard to make that happen. We, we will get as much as we can. And I tell you that they are all committed to working on your behalf and we have many allies in Congress and we'll continue working on them. But what you're doing now today by having us listen to the stories gives us more, mas fuerza, no? Mas animo, so that we can go do that. Si tengo las ganas, no? I've got to, you know, we're gonna go and we're gonna use these stories you told us here. And, you know, the, the tears that almost came down, I'm gonna use that as my strength to go and fight harder for these things and keep telling, you know, Senator Heinrich, Senator Lujan, they're your champions, but that you did today to invite us here to do, keep doing that so that we constantly hear the story so that that replenishes our commitment to you. So muchísimas gracias por invitarme a estar contigo aquí hoy día. Y sí, te prometo que voy a luchar todos los días allá en Washington para que todos los inmigrantes pueden vivir sin el miedo y no con la sombra, pero en la luz debajo de nuestra, nuestra you know, de, de, en esta tierra tan bonita. We will work for all of us to live under the light, the beautiful light that we have in this state. Thank you. Gracias a Congresista Teresa. De Thank you, Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez. Time is now for us to take action so that uh, immigrant workers and essential workers have a path to citizenship. We thank all those who are present. We thank those from our, uh, Senator Martin Heinrich's office and for, to Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez and to all those who shared their stories. So we ask you to join us this afternoon to continue in this struggle for uh, essential workers. Don't forget, we will be waiting for you. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. And with this, we conclude this session. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Gracias. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Gracias. Thank you.